secondary schools and Mr. Lieberman is the middle school principal for those of you who may not know him. Um, with this being said, so welcome and thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules to come in for this. If you may not already be aware while you're, while you're here, is uh, the middle school 7th and 8th grade, 6th grade too, but for this building, 7th and 8th grade will be able to take their iPads home with them. Um, how many 8th grade parents do we have here? Great. So you may be familiar um, that your child last year in 7th grade used the iPads uh, throughout the day. The social studies classes were all on, were on iPads. In 8th grade it's the same thing. English will be going to that just for a text difference. So their resources are digital from that place. We'll be using other ones but the classrooms had iPad carts. The, um, the library had iPads. So it was pretty much everywhere. The students just couldn't take them with them. So that's the only difference. So now they'll be able to do that. Okay, Everyone will have one assigned the first week of school. Okay, And then, um, so we are calling this Project Connect. On the website, there are so many resources there and forms if you haven't already looked at that. Um, that has a lot of information there. You would just go to the NHSD website, Parents, and then Project Connect is where you'll see everything there. So within this, I'll give a brief spiel with it. Obviously, we develop missions and goals. And um, this is a nice tool. It's a tool for communication, collaboration, um, critical thinking, creativity, all of those buzzwords, buzzwords, but it doesn't replace the teacher. It doesn't replace those things. Um, well, all of our textbooks are not, are not digital, and some of them may never be, um, and that's fine. But it, it's a resource, and um, that we need to make sure our students know how to use and get the most out of, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, we have a history of it. Uh, we have a lot of technology. Other than the iPads, there's uh, Apple Labs. Our students are constantly utilizing that, and this building has always been a tech-heavy building. Uh, middle school is a very social time, uh, and uh, we want to make sure we encourage that, and encourage that communication, and encourage the students to learn while being social. Um, sometimes, though, I have found with my own children that they don't always understand the learning aspect of this device. They understand the social media, but not necessarily the learning. So that's something that we really want to tap into. Some of our courses have um, included now a curriculum with digital citizenship, so the correct ways of doing things, um, how to send appropriate you know, email messages. You want some type of salutation in there. You want some type of closing statement. And um, that's addressed in our digital citizenship classes. Some apps that you'll see. So when your students receive this device during the first week of school, there will be various applications loaded on them. The seventh grade will have an image, and the eighth grade will have an image. Your students will not be able to buy their own applications and put them on this school issued device. If they try to do so, if it's free, for example, and they try to do so when it connects with a system that manages our devices called an MDM, a mobile device management tool, it will pull those off again. Okay? So I wanted um, us to be sort of restrictive with that. Um, those are things that we'll evaluate throughout the year, whether that is a good thing or a bad thing? Are there pros and cons to that? I'm sure there are. But as of now, this is a, an educational tool and we wanted to limit it to such as much as possible. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. These are some applications that you may see. Um, obviously, Google Drive, um, TouchCast Studio, um, the McGraw-Hill in the far, um, I guess would be your right. That is um, our textbook application. So these are various things, iTunes U, Notability. So these are some common apps that you'll see. I encourage you, if you see an app or something on your student's device, because I encourage you to be familiar with it as well, to let us know. Uh, give myself a call, give Mr. Lieberman a call, and then obviously we can, we can look into that, um, to, to whatever may have happened with that. There are other apps that we may, you may see come about on your child's device um, based upon where they are in the classroom and what the teachers need. So there are approved apps that may be pushed out or pulled away at various times. Okay. And those all go through a district approval process just like it does with their textbooks with any type of educational resources that they have. 
uh, one of our eighth grade teachers, uh, Mr. Joseph Welch, made a video because I thought it may be good to, for you guys to see how, how does this look in the classroom? What are some things that our students do? So this is a brief snapshot. You'll hear more during curriculum night uh, if you come to the seventh grade or the open house, the seventh grade and the eighth grade. Teachers will be speaking to some specifics of this. And then we'll go over the insurance, the forms that you have, and any other questions because cases, I'm sure that's the nitty gritty of what you guys and may be curious about. TouchCast Studio has been a popular app amongst middle school students as it allows them to have a television production studio within their hands. Students utilize green screens within teacher classrooms as well as the Steam Studio to help create full productions, complete with a script writing process, storyboarding, collaboration, and public speaking elements. With TouchCast Studio, students can add a level of authenticity to creation-based assignments. To give you a rundown of some of the key events at North Hills Middle School so far during the 2015-2016 school year. On Wednesday, you can wear a jersey or shirt from your favorite team. On Thursday, A more traditional Apple iOS app is iBooks. iBooks provides students with multi-touch interactive books, allowing for interactivity with images, widgets, vocabulary terms, instant checks for understanding, integration with Google Maps, and accessibility features across multiple content areas. Students have also successfully created their own interactive iBooks in several classes using an additional app called Book Creator for iPad. Students venture into the world of augmented reality through the use of and creation of products including QR codes and Erasma. Students utilize codes to access videos, participate in interactive lessons, and more. Likewise, students create augmented reality pieces called Auras on class content using Erasma. These are then shared with classmates using class channels or made available in our building's hallways to create an interactive gallery for students. With the use of Padlet, students enhance their voice in the classroom. Padlet is a real-time interactive and collaborative virtual wall that allows for easy brainstorming and the sharing of thoughts instantaneously in the classroom. Notability and iTunes U blend a traditional classroom with current technology as iTunes U offers students an organizational piece for their classes that is fully integrated with Apple apps and the Apple ecosystem. Students can access assignments, readings, and link directly to apps to complete their assignments.
Meanwhile, Notability delivers a seamless method for students to write directly onto assignments, or type upon them if they prefer. With a tap of a few icons, a student can easily share an assignment back to a teacher for feedback. In addition to formative assessment games like Kahoot, Socrative and Nearpod are extremely engaging methods to discuss content in the classroom, with students constantly providing feedback to teachers, as well as sharing their thoughts with an entire class. With this information, teachers can instantly modify lessons to best meet the needs of an individual student or class. Utilized in 8th grade, Stop Motion is an app that facilitates students sharing a narrative using their own interpretations. After creating scripts and storyboards, students can use everyday objects to help tell their story of what they want to convey, often after using primary source document analysis skills from their English and Social Studies classes. These are just a sampling of some of the exciting applications that students at North Hills Middle School have had the opportunity to utilize, and we look forward to more innovation, collaboration, and inspiration in the coming months and years. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how already the iPads have been used in the classrooms, even without all of our students having this all the time available to them. Um, these aren't things that could be done or will be done, they are being done. Um, so what we expect from our teachers as we get more and more professional development for them is to even see more of the technology used, not just to be used as to say, I use technology in my classroom, but because that's how the kids learn. They learn a lot differently than we learned growing up. And this is part of taking that step forward for our kids to make sure that they're that we're re trying to reach them the best way that we can to, to find what strategy works best for them. And these are just a few of the apps, and Dr. Panetta already shared those with you. Um, so we get the device in the kids' hands. Uh, this happens next, or I'm sorry, in a, in a few weeks. So what do they do when they get home? Now, first of all, using iTunes U, and some teachers are still going to use Google Classroom or some other um, internet-based products, do you need to have Wi-Fi to make sure that this works for them? No, you don't. Anything that they need, they'll be able to get and download while they're here in this protective, filtered environment. When they go home, will they need to be able to access the internet to do some work? Perhaps. Does it make it easier for them? Maybe. Um, do they want to be able to surf on the internet and do some things and use those apps? Okay, they could. But that's up to you to make sure that that Wi-Fi network is secure. When they go to McDonald's and use their Wi-Fi network, is that a secure place to use? Not quite. Um, so, but first of all, your internet's down for some reason, or if you feel you need to limit the screen time for that child that can only do schoolwork, shut it off. Change your Wi-Fi password. Great thing. Great way to get you to stop them from going on the internet at your home address because this only works via Wi-Fi, it's not a cellular device. Um, but then some of these restrictions are, can they use certain products, or if they're gonna watch a movie, what's the ratings, those types of things. Those are all set up in that settings um, aspect. The iPad agreement, what happens when we do issue these to uh, each child is there's four pieces of paper that you should have brought with you. If you didn't, we do have some extra copies. Um, before we're gonna issue 
those this device to the student. They're going to have we're, we're going to have each the signed copies of those four pieces of paper plus the insurance agreement, which you need to take that piece of paper that's in the folder with your child's name on it. You're going to want to take that out, and you're going to want to put the other four pieces of paper into that folder. Um, so they'll get that, the iPad case, which is either this red one that comes with the case. Um, it's pretty robust. Uh, if it happens to fall on the side, it should be OK. Um, if it obviously hits the screen, that's not okay. But we want the, the children, the students, to be start to become more and more responsible with what they have. Um, there will be some other options of cases that you could purchase for yourself that we've like checked out. Some of them have like a Bluetooth keyboard attached, and it, it's a little bit more. It's just a different style. Um, but this would be on you to purchase it. Um, we don't have bulk purchasing or anything like, the, like that. Um, but the tech department looked at them and said this is a, a, a good option that, that some parents or some students may like. But you'll get one, the students will get one that looks just like this with a, a big rubber case on it. Um, we had a pilot last year of approximately 100 students. Um, and we had one uh, that came back break, broken that was, uh, it was on the screen. They had, I guess, thrown it in their locker or something. And it's part of the students getting used to them. Um, talking with our tech ed department person, we've had 400 faculty members, roughly, um, that have had iPads over the last uh, two or three years. Um, and we've had five or six come back broken. Um, so it's, it's a percentage that we expect to come back, just accidental breakage, that uh, we replace the screens and get them back, um, back in, into operation pretty quickly. Um, we will have some in the library or in the tech office that when it does break, the student brings it to the teacher, the teacher just contacts and within that day, they'll have a replacement for them. Um, so that should be done pretty quickly for them. And then you also get the charger. Um, uh, and along the, those lines, I think it's on the next screen it is. But, um, so the iPad protection insurance agreement when on this piece of paper has the student ID, uh, which you'll need to do that, um, plus the instructions that are on the site. But if you have the student ID and um, the one-to-one -one risk uh, website, uh, you can go through that website. And as soon as you click there, you click enroll. It'll ask you for the student ID. You enter the student ID, and it asks you for some basic information about you as the adult responsible um, that you would enter that information in and then um, you agree to that or you opt out of it and uh, once we have that information then we would issue the iPad to the student. And Mr. Lerman, that information is on the website um, in HSC under um, Project Connect. It's there. I went through it um, and initially it looked like there were quite a few steps. But then as I, when I went to the site and did it, it, it really, I didn't find it too cumbersome. You do need the student ID, and it seems a little presumptuous or that you're putting the cart the course that you're registering the device before you get the device. Um, but you don't need the registration number. The serial number with your student's iPad is linked to their student ID. So it's already attached together. The important part is that student ID um, that you were given on that form letter today. It does ask you um, if you are under various financial restrictions, um, pre and reduced, or various programs that you may be eligible for. That's linked with the ID as well. But there is a payment for that. So it may ask you to enter in a debit or credit number. If you are not comfortable doing so, you can purchase these cards at our administration center. Just go down, you, you pay the $35, and we'll get, give you a prepaid card, and you can enter this information. But that's, that's your purview. Concerns with safety in the iPads. Uh, again, we have a, a filtered intranet here at North Hill School District. Um, inside, we also have Apple Classroom, which is the teacher management tool. Um, so if I'm the teacher and I have my iPad here and you all have iPads out in my classroom, I can see every screen on my iPad. Plus, if I wanted to share your screen with all the other students, I could do that. Um, if I want to push that everybody's always on 
um, Nearpod or whatever it happens to be as the application, I could push that application to everybody so it locks you that you're only able to do that. Now that's within our intranet, um, while you're in this building, while you're in the classroom. Again, going home, you as the parents have the responsibility to make sure of, that it's locked down in the sense of what they can access via the internet, it's going through their browsers, because they basically can search for anything when they're in your house or they're at McDonald's or some other open Wi-Fi network, or they can't do that here. So just so you're aware of that. Um, that's parent controls, filtered internet at school, screen time. Screen time, mobile hotspots, nighttime routines. Screen time, my, my students, my, my own children, you, you try to limit that as much as you can. Um, you don't want them on it for three or four hours a day, um, but you want to, to really try to be conscious of how much time they are spending on this machine, make sure they get out and, and do some things. Uh, again, mobile hotspots talked about uh, enough, I think. But nighttime routines, I would say at least 30 minutes before they go to bed, shut it off. Get off of the electronics. You'll sleep better. They'll sleep better. You don't have to worry about them so much. Plug it in. Um, just like we want them to bring notebooks and pencils and a textbook to class, they need to come with their iPad charged and ready to go every day. So at the end of the day, they plug it in. So it's charging overnight, so when they come into school the next day, it's charged and ready to go. Contents within your folder, I've talked about this a little bit already, but you should take what this, this out, this letter should go out and into yours, and the four pages that you came with signed, hopefully, um, put in. If you forgot them, that's okay. We have extra copies over there by Dr. Panada. Um, put those in the folder, and then leave the folder on your desk because they're arranged alphabetically to make it easy on us when we put them back in, that we can just collect them and put them back into their alphabetical again for us. Talk about that. Who should you speak to? If there's ever any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email, call me. Um, Dr. Banad is very accessible also. The assistant principal, Mr. Beal, is very accessible. Please don't ever feel like, oh my gosh, that's the principal. Do I really need to talk to them? Please, call. The worst I'll say is, you know what, I can <coughs> direct you to your counselor or your teacher. Um, if there's a question of the class, obviously, I want you to go to the teacher first. I want the student to begin to build up their feelings of responsibility to be able to go talk to the teacher first and then have you talk to the teacher. If that's not working and if that's still not working, then that whole chain of command thing. Um, but we want to really empower our children to be really build up that confidence to be able to go talk to an adult in a very good, um, at a very good manner, um, which I can't do right now, but that's okay. Um, students all have Gmail accounts, and I talked about Apple Classroom. But, um, any questions? <coughs>